This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So you may have heard that a recent poll by CNN upset President Trump. I really don't even need to discuss the politics of it because this really isn't a political channel. But there are great implications of taking the dispute, the political dispute between the president and that poll and turning that into a legal dispute. So now that you've turned it into a legal dispute, Mr. President, I get to evaluate it and criticize it and see what's going on here. So that's what we're doing today is we're going to look at this letter from President Trump to Jeff Zucker, uh, the chief operating officer of CNN. And the president writes, oh, wait, 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 no. I, I have to change my wardrobe for this story. I have to change my wardrobe for this story to, I don't even, where is the front of this wig? There, but it needs to cover up my hair. Okay, dear Mr. Zucker, the upcoming November 3rd, 2020 election is a ripe target for peddlers of misinformation and false manipulated content, including media polls. The June 8th, 2020 CNN poll is designed to mislead American voters through a biased questionnaire and skewered sampling. According to our independent assessment via the highly respected McLaughlin and Associates, the CNN poll put out today is another skewed anti-Trump poll of only 25% Republicans. It's a poll of 1,259 adults, not even registered voters, let alone likely voters. Also, it was done between June 2nd and 5th before the great economic news from last Friday. Further, the questions and topics selected likely biased the poll further. Media polls such as these are designed to manufacture an anti-Trump narrative and misinform and mislead actual voters. It's a stunt and a phony poll to cause voter suppression, stifle momentum and enthusiasm for the president, and present a false view generally of the actual support across America for the president. Instances such as this will not be the last time that CNN pollers manipulate polling data to manufacture the outcome and air misinformation to the American people. If CNN is genuinely committed to protecting free and fair elections, reporting accurately and truthfully, and polling the general pulse of American voters, rather than seeking to harm the Donald J. Trump for president, campaign, we urge CNN to immediately correct its inaccurate and skewed poll. Therefore, Donald J. Trump for President Inc. is formally requesting that CNN retract its skewered poll by publishing a full, fair, and conspicuous retraction, apology, and clarification to correct its misleading conclusions. The poll is intentionally false, defamatory, and misleading, and designed to harm the Donald J. Trump for President Inc. campaign. You are officially on notice of this dispute, and therefore you are required to undertake steps to affirmatively preserve and not delete any and all physical electronic... Okay, so then they give you a, a notice to preserve evidence. That's pretty standard in any dispute. Uh, this letter is not intended as a full and complete statement of all relative facts. Okay, whatever. And then it's signed by Jenna Ellis and Michael Glasner. And I mean, just on its face, that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Companies are allowed to conduct polls. They are allowed to report on the results of those polls. And to say that the reporting on the result of a poll would be intentionally false, defamatory, and misleading is a bit much because the standard to defame the president is like really super high. It has to be damaging in monetary terms. Like it has to be a measurable amount of actual monetary damage. And it has to be malicious. It has to be an attempt to actually maliciously hurt the president. He would also, now correct me if I'm wrong, but he would also need to argue that it was him in his individual capacity that was being harmed because as a member of the government, like you can't defame the government. Yeah, I, I, I believe that's actually also true that even though normally you'd, uh, actual malice means that you have to have actual ill will uh, or spite that you that your writing your perspective is writing from that instead of reporting. You have to prove it as well. But I'm also pretty sure you can't have actual malice against the federal government. But can you have actual malice against the person of the president enough to be defamatory? I, I don't I don't think so in this context. In saying whether he's elect, he, he whether people are going to elect him or not, that's all government and policy and politics. That is not 
uh, you know, is Donald Trump a person who doesn't pay his bills or something personally? Like that's not saying the same thing. So if you were to go around saying personal defamatory statements about the president, yeah, maybe that's cl closer to a, a defamation or personal false untrue statements with malice that cause actual damage. That could be defamatory. But a statement that you don't think that a certain number of people are are voting or not, are, are is the president saying that people vote for a president based on what the polls say? I don't think so. I, I don't. I've never voted for somebody because the polls said we think this person's going to win, so I'm going to go vote for somebody else, or I'm going to vote for that person, or something. And even then, how would you know? Like, how could I, a third party, determine whether you, the first party, uh, were going to vote, switch your vote one way or the other based on a poll that you've read? I don't know. I don't think that that is a very strong statement. So having this incredibly weak argument, let's see what CNN has to say. Dear Mr. Ellis, this responds to your letter dated June 9th. To my knowledge, this is the first time in its 40-year history that CNN has been threatened with legal action because an American politician or campaign did not like CNN's polling results. To the extent we have received legal threats from political leaders in the past, they have typically come from countries like Venezuela or other regimes where there is little or no respect for a free and independent media. CNN is well aware of the reputation John McLaughlin and McLaughlin and Associates have. In 2014, his firm famously reported that Eric Cantor was leading his primary challenger, Dave Brandt, by 34 points, only to lose by 11 points, a 45-point swing. The firm currently has a C slash D rating from 538.com. In any event, McLaughlin was able to evaluate and criticize CNN's most recent poll because CNN is transparent and publishes its methodology along with its polling results. Because of this, McLaughlin was free to publish its own critique of CNN's analysis and share his criticism across the U.S. media landscape. That's how free speech works. It's the American way. Your letter is factually and legally baseless. It is yet another bad faith attempt by the campaign to threaten litigation, to muzzle speech. It does not want voters to read or hear. Your allegations and demands are rejected in their entirety. And that's David C. Vigilante, who I'm not even sure who that is, but what a great name. What a great name for a, a person, either a lawyer or someone working in the legal profession. General counsel. Yes, he's an attorney. He's general counsel. So uh, CNN's general counts, David Vigilante, well written, well done. It doesn't require anything more. Trump's uh, letter is just propaganda so that it, his supporters have a deliverable or a document that says, he, he attacked CNN. Hey, I, I got what I wanted. He attacked CNN. Um, but it's again, it, it assumes that people are really stupid. It assumes that people are too dumb to know that his letter means absolutely nothing. His letter doesn't state any legal claim. It makes legal, it makes baseless legal threats. It makes empty legal threats. And it's basically a waste of time, except that it works on stupid people, people who do not look. And it is an insult a little bit. It's an insult in the sense that it's meant to motivate you to read further into things in both, in every direction, to be more skeptical of when someone is just feeding you propaganda. This letter from Trump means absolutely nothing other than we want to tell people who support us that we're doing something. That's it. That's all it is. It's it's not, you will not see a defamation lawsuit come out of this. Uh, if you did, you would see the stupidest and, and fastest defamation lawsuit to get dismissed ever, I think. It's a slap, right? It's a slap. It's a strategic lawsuit or strategic claim, uh, strategic litigation against public participation. It's a slap. And what I worry about is that, so CNN is large enough that it has its own lawyers that can review stuff and be like, ha ha, this is stupid. But yeah. what if you didn't have a team of lawyers that exactly. could say, oh, we'll fight this in court, that it could still be enough to stifle speech. So even the threat of litigation can be enough to shut people up. Yeah. And that is a very dangerous precedent to set for the government. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons why, in general, the government can't be defamed is because you really don't want yeah. the government suing every person that it disagrees with because the resource, um, the resources are just so yeah. disparate that it would shut down all speech. Now, 
just to be clear here, the slight difference between you can't defame the government and this case is that this is the campaign, which would not be the government. However, it is the campaign to elect the guy who runs the government. So it's as close as you're going to get without being the government. It's governmental is what I'm going to say. I, I, I think it counts. Just want to make sure that that point is clear. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I, I think it's it's I think it's redonkul redonkulous, as ridiculous as a donkey. Also, quick shout out to um, five thirty eight. So when CNN said that um, this firm had a C slash D rating from five thirty eight, five thirty eight is like my research methods. Nate Silver, um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, it makes my heart beat faster. Like, it's so good. Um, they are a masterclass in terms of being able to determine which polls are biased, which ones are representative. And they um, they factor in a lot of different things to come up with their ABCD kind of rating. Uh, and so I really do recommend, if you want to know which polls are trustworthy, if you want to know which ones are going to be the most predictive of an outcome, you've got to check out 538. I would love to see an article. I was, I was, I'm on 538 right now looking for an article about this exact situation. I would love to see it because I think that they could do a really good... Maybe we should contact Nate Silver and see if he'd like to do an interview. Um, I would probably make just little fangirl noises yes. the entire time. <laughs> I was I was about to ask you to do that and then I realized I probably don't even have to ask you to do it. But uh, no. hey tactical, <laughs> would you like to make it one of your jobs this week to reach out to Nate Silver <laughs> and see if you'd like to talk about this uh, this uh, letter from Trump about the CNN poll? Oh my god, I would love to. You can get data through flawed methods and what it does is it just supposed to to temper how um, this data can be applied to a bigger pool of people. And so if it's a really, really flawed way of getting data, then it's not going to be predictive of the wider audience at all. But if it has really good methods, then typically that's going to get you the stuff that helps predict the broader population. So if something has a C or a D rating, then you don't put as much stock in that as something that has an A rating from 538. And I know someone was like, you know, what is 538? I've never heard of it. Um, they are a uh, polling prediction thing for um, usually for uh, political uh, elections and things like that. I think they do a little bit with sports, uh, but they have the best track record and they have the best mathematical models and they have the best assumptions and everything that goes into their models. And it makes my little heart beat faster. I'm so happy. <laughs> so that's our show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite community-supported legal news and educational channel here on YouTube and also on Floatplane. Thank you for your monthly support on our various support platforms. Patreon.com slash LJ French, Sponsus.com slash Law, YouTube memberships, uh, Twitch subscriptions, and uh, Floatplane memberships as well. Thank you in June to the $50 plus supporters, Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Citizen of the Sovereign, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackley, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Otta, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Definitely Not Prenda Law, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Josh Baker, Gregory, Rudolph Bescherer Jr., Christian Hellman, Jay Dixon, Ammonite, Oscar the Prophet, and Hot Grills in Your Area, a new, uh, new supporter who just popped up yesterday but already paid for June. And thank you to the June $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel next to me and will be on the crawl of the videos and the descriptions below. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop.